Welcome back to another episode of the Hermit Poetry Series. I'm Neil Aiken, and on this channel I read poetry, mostly work by contemporary poets, occasionally poems of my own, and once in a while poems from the past. Today's poem comes to us from Larry Levis from his collection Elegy, published by University of Pittsburgh Press in 1997. This poem is entitled Elegy for Poe with the Music of a Carnival Inside It. There is a sunny place where I imagine him, a park on a hill whose grass wants to turn into dust and would do so if it weren't for the rain and the fact that it is only grass that keeps the park from flowing downhill, past its trees and past the slender figures in the statues, their stone blends in with the sky when the sky is overcast. The stone is a kind of rain and half the soldiers trapped inside the stone are dead. The others have deserted and run home. At this time in the morning, half sun, half mist, there are usually three or four guys sprawled, alone on benches, facing away from one another. If they're awake, they look as if they haven't slept. If they're asleep, they look as if they may not wake. I only imagine it as a sunny place. If they're awake, they gaze off as if onto a distant landscape, not at the warehouses and the freeway the hill overlooks, not onto Jefferson Avenue, where later they'll try to score a little infinity wrapped up in tinfoil or a flake of heaven tied up in a plastic bag and small as their lives are now but at a city that is not the real city, gradually appearing as the mist evaporates. For in the real city, one was kicked in the ribs by a night watchman until he couldn't move. Another was a small-time dealer until he lost his nerve and would then have become a car thief if only the car had started. And the last failed to appear, not only for a court date, but for life itself. In these ways, they are like Poe if Poe had lived beyond composing anything and had been kicked to death and then dismembered in this park, his limbs thrown as far away from what was left of him as they could be thrown. And they are not like Poe. The three of them stare off at a city that is there in the distance, where they are loved for no clear reason, a city they walk toward when they are themselves again, a city that vanishes each morning in the pale light. Poe would have admired them and pitied them, for Poe detested both the real city with its traffic crawling over the bridges and the city that vanishes. In autumn, the rain slants and flesh turns white. The tents go up again on the edge of the town, and then in the carnage spiel, everyone gets lost. And Poe, dismembered, becomes no more than the moral and the story of his life, a cautionary tale no better than the sideshow, where the boy with the sow's hoofs instead of hands taps the glass, some passing entertainment for the masses. In the carnage spiel, everyone lost comes back again. Even Poe comes back to see himself disfigured in another. That is what he's doing here, longing to mingle invisibly with the others on the crowded midway as they lick their cotton candy and stare expressionlessly at one another. He wants to see the woman who has fins instead of arms and the man without a mouth. He wants to see the boy behind glass and his own clear reflection in the glass. The carnival's so close only a few blocks that he could hear the intermittent off-key music wheezing faintly out of the merry-go-round. It might as well be music from the moon. The traffic never lets him cross. The weeks pass, and then the months, and then the years with their wars, and the marquees going blank over the streets because no one comes anymore. And the crowd, filing into the little tent, watches suspiciously, for the crowd believes in nothing now but disbelief. And therefore, at the intersection of radiance and death, the intersection of the real city and the one that vanishes, Poe is pausing in the midst of traffic, one city inside the other. The rain slants. The flesh is a white dust. The cars pass slowly through him, and the boy keeps tapping at the glass, unable to tell his story. Uh, that was Larry Levis. Elegy for Poe with the music of a carnival inside it from, from Elegy, um, University of Pittsburgh Press, 1997. If you enjoyed this reading and this poem, please do check out the video for more information about Larry Levis, as well as where to purchase his book, as well as uh, more information about other projects and series I'm currently working on. 
Um, if you want to support this project and this channel, please consider liking these videos with a thumbs up, subscribing to the channel, just hit the bell icon and you'll be notified every time there's a new video, which is every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, um, or commenting below, uh, if you have suggestions, ideas, or just general feedback. If you like what you hear, if you have recommendations for other poets and other poems, um, or if you, uh, just want to share your own story, that's also fine too. Um, and in general, you can just share these videos on social media. All this uh, goes to help support these poets and enable these poems and uh, poets to reach a wider audience. Uh, I'm grateful for the power of this platform to share um, this creative work, <coughs> to uh, be able to share my enjoyment of these poems and uh, to celebrate the, the many, many different ways in which poetry happens in the world and how it gets written and how it gets performed. Um, I'm thankful for all of you, uh, viewers who are new as well as those who have been around for a while and grateful for your support and your enthusiasm for this project and hope, uh, to continue to be making videos for, for a long time to come. Um, thank you all for, uh, staying too until the very end. Uh, I wish you all the very best in your own creative efforts and endeavors and, uh, hope that our paths will cross at some future point and we will be able to, uh, and well, I don't know, <laughs> celebrate in some way, uh, that is, uh, reflective of that shared journey and, uh, be able to be connected again. Uh, thank you for poetry. Thank you for celebrating poetry. Thank you for being a part of the work of poetry. Um, so until next time, uh, I'm Neil Aiken. This is the Hermit Poetry Series, and we'll be back again with more poetry, more reading, and more discussion. Uh, until then, stay safe and well, and keep reading, keep writing. We'll see you soon.